Welcome back, guys, to another Giants video. Shout out to my boys. It's two guys that's in the in the chat always in the videos that support my Giants coverage. Wanted me to come back and do some some Giants uh, analysis. And of course, today was a big day. We had the, the biggest test on our schedule so far. Um, that has us going up against the local Baltimore Ravens, as most of you guys know or may not know. I live in Maryland. Baltimore Ravens, the, the better team coming in, even though we had the better record against the, well, not now 5-1 and one New York Giants, the 3-3 three and three Baltimore Ravens, they were 3-2. and two. Of course, the stud, stud, stud running back. I'm a Lamar Jackson fan. I know many, maybe of my followers, or many of these people in general, um, are, they're, they're going to find something wrong with Lamar, Lamar Jackson, um, regardless of what it is. It could be skin color. It could be because he's a scrambling quarterback. It could be just they just don't want a person that looks like that succeeding in that position. Whatever it is, I'm a Lamar Jackson fan. I gave him the, the definite up to win this game. But I felt the Giants were going to keep it close. And then the Giants kept it close. First half, Washington. I'm, like, I'm not Washington, but Baltimore Ravens. And then second half, Brian Dayball and the Giants was able to pull it through Yet again, they did the same thing last week in London with Green Bay. And, of course, another superior quarterback in Aaron Rodgers. So that means in the past two weeks, the New York football giants have beaten Aaron Rodgers, league MVP Aaron Rodgers, and another league MVP from a few years back, Lamar Jackson. Um, shout out to the Giants for, for playing a great game. Also, shout out to the Ravens, too, for playing a great game. Also, we couldn't do anything. And I mean anything with King and Drake. He, 10 rushes, I think 117 yards, it was, it, was, it was crazy. We could not stop him. And that's the game I would have hoped, at least fantasy-wise, we would have hoped that Saquon Broccoli would have had. We could not bottle up King and Drake. And I know that's not a household name at all. The Ravens did great uh, gap discipline for getting those running holes for King and Drake. It was amazing to see. I'm so happy that the Giants were able to pull it out. Let's go over some of the highlights. Guys, man, the Giants. We're, we're going to go over some stats. I got some things viewing right there on, on the screen as far as the, the gameplay. But, man, this was an incredible, incredible game. I'm going to start. I'm going to start with Saquon Barkley. I'm going to start there. Like I said, I, I feel Kenyon Drake had the better game. But, but Saquon Barkley made. Um, the same amount of great plays. I'm not going to discredit anything with Baltimore Ravens at all. I love Lamar Jackson. He's a great quarterback. I feel we know why he's he's uh, criticized. Well, we know. It's, the, it's typical American shit. Bullshit. But whatever. Because he has a far more winning percentage than a lot of bum-ass quarterbacks. And this is not going to be a video bashing Lamar Jackson. It's not going to be a video bashing Daniel Jones either because he's been playing great this season also, cutting down the turnovers. And if you can be a game manager, you have you have room in this league, right? You don't see me even creating videos bashing Daniel Jones anymore because he's cutting down on the turnovers. The Alex Smith types can win in this league. Just manage the game. There's Trent Drofer. There's plenty of quarterbacks who just were game managers, and they ended up having good careers. Daniel Jones, under Brian Dayball, first year um, head coach, is able to limit his turnovers, which makes him decent. It makes him decent. Is he still worth that six pick? Nope. But he makes making him decent. But I want to talk about Saquon Barkley real quick. 22 rushes, 83 yards, and a touchdown. He didn't have the big breakaway plays that he had in the previous weeks past. But man, he made great plays. Great play on the touchdown. I'm springing. It looks like he sprung from like the fourth yard line, which was crazy. Normally, his previous record was three. But man, springing up. Springing up, Saquon, from the four-yard line to get that touchdown. And then, at the end of the game, and he could have had two touchdowns, but he downs it at, like, the half-yard line in order to give Baltimore no chance of any type of heroics. That's an MVP type of level play from Saquon. I want to give him props. I want to give this coaching staff. The media is all over the coaching staff, rightfully so. Brian Dayball is looking like coach of the year. A lot for that. There's no reason, even with a soft schedule, that the Giants should be 5-1. and one. Me saying that included. There's this just no way. No way. And we, we, if we played a little better, we could be 6-0, and which is crazy. 
So shouts out to Saquon. Shouts out to the coaching staff for putting Saquon in position to be that playmaker. I don't know why Joe Judge and Joe and David Gettleman didn't understand that. You have the best player on the field with Saquon, and you're giving it to other players or you're running him 10 times. Like This coaching staff understands that Saquon needs as many touches as we can give him, right? While also mixing it up with the other running backs. Instead of having the bum that we had last year, like I said, I erased his name out of my memory. We got Matt Breida. I like Matt Breida. I like, because I've seen him be productive in San Francisco. I'm so happy we were able to snatch him up. I love him being the backup to Saquon. Um, um, not Richie James, but the uh, Brightwell. I like Brightwell also. Like, I love our running back. I'm confident that if one of them goes down with an injury or has to come out for a play, the other the other two can step up. That is that is genius level um, talent acquisition by Joe Shane and the rest of the boys. So very 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 satisfied with that. The running the running game looks really good. We're the number two rushing attack in the NFL behind Cleveland. I, I think it's Cleveland because I, I think um, what's his name Nick Chubb is the, the leading rusher. But we are number two in the NFL. Um, you can correct me on that. Probably wrong. But we're number two in the NFL in, in NFL rushing, which is awesome. And I love our stable of running backs, including Daniel Jones. Because they're, they're starting to realize he has above average wheels for a pocket-type passing quarterback. And he can he can, he can can get those bootlegs as, as, he, as he did in the Chicago game. And also, they try to do a little bit of that today, too. But shout out to Baltimore. They, they, they had great defense. We know that. Yes, we, we, we snatched their coach, um, Wink Martindale, but they still have key players like Patrick Queen and Humphrey, and they're making plays in the Baltimore defense, which made it hard for us. Saquon didn't get his 100 yards, but 22 on 83 will take that with a touchdown and could have possibly in two if he was greedy, but he's not because Saquon's a team player. Got to understand that. Receiving, there wasn't a lot of receiving, but, man, we made some touchdowns, and that was the amazing thing about it. We made some touchdowns. You got a touchdown to Saquon Barkley, which was great. I'm super, super, super happy about that. Um, it was just a great game. You know, it wasn't the, the gaudy yards, um, but we did have a stud, stud um, tight end that's coming up. And we got to give props. Number 82, Daniel Bellinger. He was like the 16th rated or 12th rated tight end coming out this year, but he was the number one rated blocking tight end and what the coaching staff what this coaching staff is doing let me talk to you guys what this coaching staff is doing is they are saying you're a great blocker we can create opportunities for you to catch the ball and i love that no one knows none of these content creators are talking about that you got to talk about this stud stud um tight end because that was one of our weaknesses right but it was addition by subtraction because guess what we let go Evan Eagle. We're not signing him. You know, we play him next week, uh, by the way, in, Ball, uh, in, in Jacksonville. So we're going to see Jacksonville Jaguars and Evan Ingram's bum ass coming up against um, his former team in New York Giants. Let's see if he make plays. Let's see if Xavier McKinney, maybe Landon Collins, um, Dane Belton can get up in his ass, right? Because he made bum, bum, bum plays here. And hopefully he's doing better down in Jacksonville. But we got a better, t pure tight end. Doesn't have um, Evan Ingram's speed. But he's making those plays. And guess what? Not only is he a great blocker, which helps out Saquon, which helps, which helps out Matt Breida, but he also, we're creating um, passing opportunities for him also, which is great. I think he has a touchdown in three of the last, um, three of our first six games, was uh, something something along along the lines of that, which is awesome. I love Daniel Village. Like, we needed a tight end that one can block because we're a run first team, right? Especially with the injuries and limitations at wide receiver is an opportunity to be a, like almost like, like I'll try to Travis Kelsey is in um, Kansas City, where or, or in Baltimore, like we did. Like Mark Andrews is Lamar Jackson's number one receiver. Like it, it's not Devin Duvernay, it's Mark Andrews. And hey, Mark Andrews played receiver at Oklahoma. He he was he was a stud. There's no reason why he was like the third or second. I'm tight end drafted in his draft. He, the college stats was crazy. So I'm happy to see Lamar and um, Mark Andrews doing big things. And Mark Andrews was the problem in this game. But we edged it out. And that's the thing. We, 
edged it out. And the Giants was able to pull this thing through. Nothing big in the um, receiving category, but we made some great plays, I tell you that. Um, Bellinger got his touchdown, you know, um, and, and made, a, made a great play over the middle to be able to snag that thing on down. Um, and I'm super, super satisfied with Daniel Jones not throwing interceptions. So we got to give him got to give him credit on that. The scrambling plays, making good, the toughness over the past three weeks. You got to give Daniel Jones some props to that. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. He did have the fumble, but that comes with the territory because the Ravens have a great defense. They do. They have stud players there still, and they've always had a great defense. Fumbles are going to happen. It's no knocking on Daniel Jones. You got you're you're facing a stud line, stud line. Let's go with unsung heroes, man. Julian Love, Julian Love, right? Coming back from a slight injury also. But the captain, and it shows that he has the smarts coming out of Notre Dame. It, it, it's, it's incredible. Our first takeaway interception of the year, and it came from Jul, Julian Love, right? And I, it was such, it was a bonehead play. It was hero ball by Lamar Jackson. One of his few bonehead plays in the game, but a smart play. That we needed because our corners like our corners are like bat down corners and i, I played corner in college they, they bat the ball down right they're not corners that are opportunistic like a trayvon Diggs, where he may get burnt here but he's going to try to make the play um and, and snag uh, and snag an interception like asante asante samuel senior would do with the patriots and, and, and the eagles that our corners are not like that they're they're going to try to bat the ball down but julian love not only making the play in the end zone to stop the, uh, the the touchdown reception from Duvernay, right, earlier in the game, but then also coming back and, and picking Lamar Jackson off late in the fourth quarter. We needed that. So it was a great play. To me, that's my uh, unsung hero of the game. But also, you got to combine with my boy uh, Dexter. Yeah, Dexter Lawrence, too. Amazing. Like, Beyond, besides Aaron Donald, besides Aaron Donald, I'm thinking that Dexter Lawrence may be a Pro Bowl alternate. You heard it here, you heard it here first, man. He's having a game. He's having a season. Dexter Lawrence is looking like the 11th pick in the freaking NFL draft that he was. And he didn't look like the, the first three years here. So you got to put that on coaching saying, you know, we got to study here. He was a stud in high school. He was a stud in college. Let's give him some plays and, 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 and see how it goes. Let's put him in positions to make plays. And I feel that uh, Dexter Lawrence has really taken off. He's looking like he can be in the NFL top 100 for the first time this year. Uh, like It's going to be Aaron Donald, and it might just be right beside him in the NFC Pro Bowl roster. It may be Dexter Lawrence. Check back to this video to see if I'm right. I'm hoping it still continues. To make his progression, right, man. Um, the baby Moreau, like I said, he's a journeyman corner at best, but he almost had a pick. I really wanted him to make that pick, but hopefully we can kind of get there. Um, other than that, though, defense did good. Um, O'Shane Zimenez, he flashed again, but then also Kayvon Thibodeau was close. Like I, the only thing I don't like about Kayvon is that he talks a lot of shit, and I feel that you have to be playing like Micah Parsons in order to talk that much shit because Parsons is in our division. They're both highly ranked um, a drafted, I will say, linebacker slash defensive ends. And I feel that I hear more from Kayvon than Parsons. And Parsons actually produces a hell of a lot more um, even just this season than Kayvon. But Kayvon, that's the only thing I don't like. Like, if you're going to talk shit, you got to be able to back that up. And I feel this play is getting there, but it's not. He hasn't backed it up yet. I, I don't want you talking too much shit, Kayvon. Like, take the Aziz Ojolari route. But it, that's the, like I said, we, we, we drafted both of the guys. We know Kayvon has a big personality. I want that play to match up. Because I don't want him to fall into the, um, what's his name, Chase, uh, whatever the, the dude's name in, uh, not Chase Claypool, but whatever Chase is in, in, in uh, Washington. I don't want him to fall into that where you have you show flashes in the first season and then we don't hear shit from you with injuries and things like that for the following two. I don't want that at all. 
But the Giants had a great, 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 great coaching staff. And we were actually able to get in there and um, get a sneak out of victory. Like I said, sneak out of victory. Like, And we didn't, the, the Ravens didn't lose this. We had to win this. We were down once again at halftime. We were down. We were down. We were down at halftime. And the Giants came out and, 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 and took over this thing. We really did. This thing was what twenty to what three or whatever. It was some crazy, not twenty to three, but like twenty to ten at one point. And we etched out. We kept them at twenty. So shout out to our defense. And we scored two touchdowns. Hey man, you you, you got to give it up to Coach Dayball. You got to give it up. Give, give it up to this team buying in with limited players like. There's very few teams that will survive what's going on at our wide receiver position. Our stud playmaker, um, Sterling Shepard's out for the season. Stupid turf. Like, they got to get rid of that turf. One thing about stupid John Mara is he wants to be cheap, putting in that turf in MetLife Stadium instead of getting natural grass. I'll never understand it. Like, we, we need our players. And then you're getting a nothing burger with um, Kenny Galladay. 72 million and there's nothing happening from him. Healthy scratches, good, good touchdown, and also playmaking ability by Wandell Robinson. He's finally got off injury and he's made some plays. He's, he's flashing. We need that. Uh, we need that. Like Wandell has the heart of a lion for being, you know, a, a short, stubby guy. And he, he played like that today. Like 17 wanted the smoke, and it was great because. Baltimore was bringing the smoke, and 17 wanted it right back. So great play by uh, Wandale. Great play by Daniel Jones not throwing the costly interception. Lamar threw it. We were able to take advantage of it and sneak out the victory. And, hey, big shout-out to Wink Markendale. I, I know how it is the way you want revenge on a former company that lets you go, um, and so on and so forth. I know what that's like, what, what that feels like. You got a chip on your shoulder. And I know Wink had a chip on his shoulder. And the Giants was able to pull it together, not only for Coach Dayball, but for Wink also. Because uh, I like he, he wanted to be a staple. He only had one bad season in Baltimore. The other seasons, his defense was in the top 10. It was only one season last season where it dropped off and they let him go. All right. Cool beans. Well, now I'm going to get my revenge and my team has a better record than your team. So that's, that's the list. Cool Wink. Chain Wink. He's going to have it, and and that's what it is, man. So shout out to Julian Love. Shout out to Saquon Barkley. I know it feels good for him to be able to get this revenge tour. Um, and the Giants are surprisingly 5-1. and one. Now, we got a game tonight, Sunday Night Football, Cowboys-Eagles. Let me know in the comments which team you got. We're going we're gonna to put this video up. Shout out to my long-term supporters, too. I love you guys. G-Sox fan, you know, and, and the other guy, um, I Got your name, but I, I, I'll, I'll put you in the comments too. I'll probably pin your post. Put a post in there. I'm going to pin you up there, man. But I love you guys. Thank you guys. And I'm, I'm going to try to do this every week. Um, you guys know I play my, my World of Warcraft, you know, doing my nerd thing, doing my Zoomer thing. Um, but I'm also going to put some Giants coverage up there because I'm a big Giants fan. I'm a Brooklyn born boy, Flatbush and Beekman, you know. And yeah, the Giants looking great. Surprisingly, five and one. This, I thought this was going to be a terrible season. Um, a rebuilding season, but look at that. Even with less players, imagine if we get Odell, because I want my boy Odell back. We got Landon. I'm super happy about that. I get to break out my Collins jerseys, because I got a Collins jersey. I got a red Collins, and I got a red Barkley, and I can't wait to break them both out. Right now, I got on my my, um, my straight hand. You guys see the straight hand right here? I got the classic straight hand, 92 for life. You know, I had to break this one out, the oversized one I got when I was like a kid. It's like a 2X, and I, I can't even fit it. But I'm rocking my straight hand right now, and we pulled out the victory against the Ravens. We're feeling good. Let me know what you guys think, but also let me know who you guys want to win tonight. We got Cowboys. We got Eagles. We got Sunday Night Football. I, for one, rooting for the Cowboys. I don't want to stay, say the, the Eagles to be undefeated. They talk too much trash, you know? Way too much trash. I don't want the Eagles to be undefeated, you know? Give, give that victory to the Cowboys so we all can be 5-1. That'll put the Cowboys in first place because they have the tiebreakers over myself, our team, and, the, of course, the Eagles if they win. 
with with uh, Cooper Rush, which is crazy. So imagine the shit talking they're gonna do when when Dak comes back, and rightfully so. There's no way they should have won all those games with Cooper Rush, but they did, including us, including over us. So that's why I'm looking forward to the Thanksgiving game. We got to get our revenge in on Dak. Let let the quarterback controversy begin when we when we take that victory on Thanksgiving. You know, get some of that turducken. Shout out to John Madden, rest in peace. But let me know who you guys want to win. Do you want the Eagles to stay undefeated? Right? Sunday Night Football? You want the Cowboys to get the victory? Or you want the Cowboys to take the loss because you hate those fans, whatever it is. You know, I, I like what the NFL did this season, too, with put, pushing our Eagles games to, like, November and December. It's great. You know, we don't have to really worry about them, but I still want to see them lose. I'll tell you that. Talk too much shit. Right? But the Giants looking great. It's still a rebuilding season, but we're not looking forward to no draft. We're looking forward to one game at a time each 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 victory. They didn't give us the chance to beat Green Bay, and they did definitely didn't give us the chance to beat Baltimore. And we etched out two victories. Let me know what you guys think. Reggie versus Silas, Giants coverage. Follow on the Twitch channel. You see it up there. And I'll talk to you guys next time.